Today's gospel, the Lord brings up the whole institution of marriage. So today, let's just kind of pause and make some comments about different aspects of marriage. First of all, we find the Lord saying, In the beginning, God made them male and female. Then the man must leave his father and mother, be joined to his wife, and the two become one flesh. So right from the beginning of Genesis, God gives the formula for marriage. One man, one woman, joined together, becomes truly married before the Lord. So that's the formula. It's, it's almost like if you take the formula for water. It's H2O. If you have H2O, that equals water. That's the formula. Now, if you want to put other types of things together, well, it's not going to be water. You can call it water, but it's not water. It's H2O that equals water. So same with today. It's man, woman equals marriage. You can have other formulas and call it marriage, but before the Lord... It's not what marriage would be. He's the author of marriage, and he gave us the formula. Then also in the church, we have the sacrament of marriage. And basically, we have two people fall in love with each other. And they say, let's, let's join together. Let's be companions on this journey. And as two Christians to primarily be helpmates in helping each other to attain the fullness of life in the kingdom. So two people join each other on this journey of life. They come before the Lord, they ask the Lord to bless their love, and they ask the Lord to allow their love to become a tangible sign of His love. In Scripture, the Lord uses the marriage situation to explain to us His relationship with us. He says the church is His bride, and He calls Himself the groom. So He says, as the groom loves the bride, and the bride loves the groom, so I, your God, love you, my people, as my bride. I have this intimate love with you. And he calls us to have the intimate love with himself. And so truly, the sacrament of marriage, the couple become a symbol of God's love for his people. So basically, in marriage, the church calls the couple to be faithful. They take vows. They say, I will love you until the day that I die. Again, his faithfulness in marriage is a reflection and image of God's faithfulness to us. In this relationship with God, God is the faithful one. We're the ones that have to go to confession. We're the ones that are sinful. We're the ones that break the relationship. We're the ones that become adulterous, chase after other gods. But God in the relationship is faithful. So faithfulness of the couple is a sign of God's faithfulness to us. And then the couple are given this awesome privilege of allowing their love to become creative. So love is creative. God, who is the source of all life, God, who is love, love creates. So the couple, the man and woman, have this awesome privilege of creating new life from their relationship. So the church has this sacrament that truly blesses the couple, giving them what they need to be faithful members faithful in showing the love that God has for his people. Now, of course, the marriage state is not easy. Again, it's not easy to enter the marriage state because, again, basically, we're called to be of service to each other, the man and woman serving the needs of the other. We tend to have this brokenness of being self-centered. We have this effects of original sin. I want what I want, the way I want it, how I want it, when I want it. It can be if you're so self-centered. But when you get married, you've got to die to yourself the way that Jesus taught us. You've got to die to yourself so the husband serving the needs of the wife and the wife to serve the needs of the husband. Selfless giving to one another. In today's society, unfortunately, we see a lot of selfish taking. In any relationship, if it's built on a selfish taking, is basically the way that it's going to die. You're basically on the road to destruction if basically both are not being selfless givers to one another. So again, it's not an easy journey. That's why you go before the Lord. We're asking the Lord to give us the graces that we need to be faithful to one another, to truly have this grace to love one another. Now we know today, Marriage is in critical condition. Again, there's much breakups, much divorce, many dysfunctions in relationships. Again, marriage is going through a difficult time. Again, you have to realize that family life is the root and foundation of any society. 
So we believe we're in spiritual battle. And one arena that the devil comes is against relationships, marriage. Break the couple, destroy the family, and now society becomes distorted. So again, we want to pray for the health and wholeness of marriage. And again, if you think of it, if people were to live the two simple commandments that God has taught us, marriages would be healthy. Again, the first commandment, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, with all your strength. Let God be your first and primary relationship. If the man and woman in marriage had God as the first and primary relationship, it would solve a lot of problems. See, sometimes in marriage, the couple, the, the spouse, wants the other to quench their inner thirst of the spirit. In other words, to become God. You know, sometimes people get married and say, okay, my life will be fulfilled, I'll have everything I need. But again, we have this spiritual thirst that the spouse cannot fill. Only God can quench the inner thirst of the spirit. Yes, you love one another in a human relationship, but every person that really, every person in marriage needs to have a healthy relationship with their God. And again, to love one another, to serve the needs of the other. So as we gather here today, may we truly ask the Lord to bring health and healing to all marriages, to bring health and healing to all those that are divorced, to bring health and healing to all the, those who live apart from a, the marital state and live together in sin. May the Lord truly bring health and restoration to his people as we continue our journey to the kingdom. God bless you.